the lid of his temple. And then, searching the stars, why see when you are meeting your church obligations? Definitely, they would be interested. So now you see people that would be interested in your financial statements. Okay, let's move on. What does your income statement do? Now, I understand some of it. That you will be discussing a few hard concepts, right? And I'm sure you can start these in class. If you're thinking, what am I referring to? I am referring to the maximum concept. I'm referring to the concept of materiality. I'm referring to my financial year when I prepare my financial statements. All these accounting concepts and GAAP and GAAP concepts are very important for you to understand. Now, in terms of the income statement, when you match your income and your expenses within a financial year, you are actually applying the, the matching concept in order to determine the profit that you have earned in that financial year. So what is the income statement then? The income statement gives you, gives you an indication of the operating activities of the enterprise during the year. In other words, it is also called the result of operations. You will notice, in terms of the latest company stats, you, you find the income statement is called the statement of profit and loss, all referring to the same thing, the income statement, which will be the focus of our lesson today. Another statement that we will be doing later on is called the balance sheet, which indicates the enterprise's financial position at the end of the year. It's also the state of affairs, also referred to as statement of financial position. Keep that in mind. But we will not be doing the balance sheet today. That is not the focus of our lesson. Yes, we will be doing another lesson on the balance sheet. And you ask yourself the question, where is the origin issue? Very often, you forget where it comes from. Because in your idea, in your mind, you have this idea that it starts from the trial level. It's definitely not. In terms of the recording of transactions, understand that all transactions are recorded as they occur, and you commence your financial statements with your source document. Okay? Now thinking back to earlier years when you worked with your source documents, you have to understand that the source, what source that in the beginning, it's the beginning of your transaction. The source document is into your tax statement journal. Once it goes from your tax statement journal into your ledgers, and remember that you have a general ledger, you have a debtor's ledger, and you have a creditor's ledger. Okay, from there, you expect a pre-adjustment trial balance. That would be your starting point if you are doing the financial statement. The issue was that the impact would be your year of adjustment. So after your pre-adjustment, the week before adjusting trial balance, you now have your year end adjustment, and then you have your post-adjustment, post-after, when you have your post-adjustment trial balance. And it is from this trial balance that you then can enjoy the income statement and close up your nominal account. You will then put out the balance sheet. Okay. Now, understand this speech that you have. It's a critical and important to understand this speech. Your income statement should reflect all incomes and expenses which apply during the period under review. Therefore, the statement will be drawn up to determine a profit for a period. In other words, you will find this income statement for the year ended. And say it starts on a particular date, normally 12 months, and it ends on a particular date. The financial statement of the, of the state starts on the 1st of March and ends on the 30th of February. And that is why you find most companies try to align their income statements with that of the, of the state so that the financial year matches. So in terms of return, it makes it much easier. It's 
not a necessity. I understand that. Okay. Keep in mind that when you are preparing your financial statements, that they are in accordance with God, your God principles, like I alluded to earlier, the matching principle. It is not your income earned and your expenses incurred for the period under review. And you can do that for its importance. The matching principle, when you match the income that you have earned, and the expenses that you have incurred for the period under review. What we use of terminology, I say income that we have earned and expenses to be earned. I'm not saying income to be seen, but expenses paid. The job, you will notice a distinct difference between those two things. So that's the matching principle. Not your idea of matching. But don't worry about that. Are we talking about the accounting matching concept? Now, obviously, I'm still to play with all of this here, but, the, but sometimes a reminder is beneficial to us. When you're dealing with income, we're dealing with sales, we're dealing with rent income, we're dealing with our discount receipt, commission income, that gets to be covered, we're dealing with the budget of decrease, which we'll explain later, the trading stock surplus, a profit and sale of that. Those are the types of income you will deal with when you're dealing with income taking. When it comes to our expenses, we have to deal with cost of sales, our interest rates, discounts allowed, interest on loans, or other operating expenses. Like what? We're talking about water, electricity, insurance. Come on, the list is ended, and you are afraid for them to come. I'm sure you are. When we deal with bad debts, we deal with provision for bad debts, increased trading stock, trading income to deficit, we are not to say of assets. Anything that you have done, you have a problem. You dealt with them in great shape. You dealt with them in great manner. So there's nothing new to you. I can tell you that. Yes, there are two other spaces. They need to have an expertise and there are other things. Now, these will be new to you when the directors are working for the company. They will have to earn an income. Right? Therefore, you will gain a sound called directed fees, sometimes referred to as directed involvement, sometimes referred to as directed remuneration. Uh, so, what's the terminology? All of it is directed fees. All it is, yes, the company, because it's a public company, needs to be audited. The financial system is compulsory. For the state needs to be audited. And who do you think is going to audit? The internal auditor? It's not the job. Now, the journey here is an external auditor. That's the one thing. All right. I'm going to talk about something now very briefly. Just briefly. We will get back to it here later on. Why have I always told you? Because we will talk extensively about the internal and the external auditor. So, shortly, for a brief explanation, remember. The company, we will talk to the public company, needs to be audited by an external or independent audit. Right? And the cost of audit and all of that, not for now, but definitely. We will discuss it with you because the, the cost is very important. Okay. So now we have an overview of the income tax expenses. In other words, in other words, great job. You will see when we do that to the question, how do you refer specifically to certain items? Right, let's move on. Now we're looking at an income statement. What's here? Obviously, we have the name of the business. The risk of killer income statement deals with continuous inventory system. When you see, we're talking about the particular way in which our, our stock is kept. You are often able to see about the actual idea, right? You have to think very well. Now, the format of your income statement. Very often, very often, you find that members don't, are not, are not conversant with the form of your income statement. 
time. What is the only thing to know? Look at this one thing. Look at the format. And make sure that you understand the format. Because once format is in place, I promise you, I'll be back in the Okay. So you will start with the format. And it is sales minus your debt allowance. That's what I'm concerned with. Your sales minus your debt allowance. You subtract your cost of sales. Yeah? As you see, watch the use of the bracket here. You can see that the screen is the amount of the bracket here. Right? That will then give you your gross profit. Okay? You then have your other operating income. Income, right? We can straight it if you do so. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. So you get this thing called Visa Income VR Square EUT. Visa Income VR. Okay, but very important, and this is critical, that you make sure that you do not include, or in other words, exclude your income. Why? You will see it has a place for itself. So, all other income, all the other operating income, will be attracted off into this income. This is the my gross operating income. That one there. I now subtract my operating expenses. Again, there's an exclusion here. What do I exclude? I exclude my interest. That one there. Please, please, I implore you do not include your interest income or your interest expenses under the operating section of your income tax. Please don't do that. Okay. Don't do the work with you. Look at the terminology. There's so much of that that I'm going to tell you. Really, guys, there's really much about this and this happening in the subject of our Okay. It now you now have your operating cost. It tells you all the laws that it's from operations. And then what you see now, what is the next? We now bring in our interest income. Okay. okay, now my interest income is brought in, in to my operating income, and that would give me my profit or my loss for interest expense. There you go. Notice for interest income, there's a note attached to it. Got it? We'll come, we'll come back to that note and later on our program. Then we bring in our interest expense. Again, a note attached to it is that there are different components that make up the interest expense. But more about that later. This will then give you your profit or loss before taxation. Clear? I hope you understand that. Now you bring in your taxation, obviously, an expense to the company. We said sole traders, partnership, the taxation was paid by the owners. Whereas the taxation of the company is paid by the company. We understand that. That is why it's a new expense which means specific, specifically with the company for taxation. This then gives you your final amount, like profit or loss after tax for a year. And notice it has no tax liability once again. And this one is the key to you that this is your net profit for a year. In future, make number nine. Okay, great job. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing a few adjustments that definitely need to be made. Say age one. How we deal with these adjustments? Right, great job. That's it. Let's look at this adjustment now. Understand. Understand. Remember. What I have always said, whenever you are doing an adjustment or whenever you are keeping an average paper, remember to write this on your paper. And what is that? R T F T D. What does that stand for? Read the full section. Right? All these people, people are angry and they, they say full section, but it won't go there. But now, so what's the adjustment? The details of an employee will be withdrawn from the first of seven entries of the job, with a notice from the salary general for February. 
the detail of his salary, the, the detail of his salary were spot yet to the detail. Get those. So note, I'm telling you that all your attributes to this are a part, a part of salary to the rest. So the first thing that you do is identify your gross salary. Then you it's 10,500. So then, if you're looking at the same people, what's your calculation? You are debiting your salaries with 10,500. Why? Because that's what somebody has your salary. Understand that these deductions here will impact on your balance sheet. But the gross salary of your employee for that month is 10,500. Clear? Okay. Now you have noticed, I said, credit liability. You then set star PAYE, you credit your pension fund, and you set the unemployment insurance fund. Those are your liabilities that are going to impact on your balance sheet. But the income statement does it. It's your gross salary that's going to impact. And how is it going to impact? You will see just now. Look, look at my contributions. I told that there are two contributions. Here they are. A total of 500 grand. So the four, my calculation is, it doesn't stand in the world. Again, the reason, what was I told? I was told that all contributions are recorded as part of salaries and wages. So I understand that. So therefore, in my salaries, I'll say debit salaries with 500 grand, credit my liability. Obviously, what am I going to credit? I'm going to credit my pension fund and my UIF. How good is that? How does this appear in my income statement? Obviously, I'll have salaries for detail. I would open my bracket. Guys, I'm clean. I'm ready. If you want to put on my knees, I'll do that as well. Please ensure that if you do your calculation, you show your calculation in brackets. Understand. Working from the position that I know to be allowed for part by season work. You will get part by the function that you get for calculation that you show in brackets. So once you get, I might may sound like a man, I know that. I've shown your calculation. Then, there's my figure for my side balance, there's my 10,500, there's my 500, and there's my final figure for my salary. Okay, I take that in phone. 52,000 rand has been declared in salary. He has said there is 40 cents in every rand. And this has been correctly recorded. In other words, the receipt of the money has been correctly recorded for 40 cents in the rand. The remaining balance has been written off as irrecoverable. What's my calculation once again? I think you will get of 32,000 rand. Multiplied by comma four, what is said to the end is zero comma four. It's so equal to twelve thousand eight hundred. And what is that? That's the amount that you can receive on the receipt. Okay, what do we now do? Take the original amount of the check of thirty-two thousand minus the twelve thousand eight hundred. Why? Because that's the amount that you receive. What you are left with the figure of nineteen thousand two hundred. What is the 19,200? Certainly, the 19,200 is your bad debt. Therefore, the bad debt figure will now be as follows. One, against the item, watch the bracket. Again, open up your bracket. The initial figure in the trial balance was 12,000. There's my 12,000. What am I, what's my double PC? Debit bad debt. Credit that is control. In other words, you can clearly see what I'm doing. I'm increasing my expense by debiting it, and why I expect to debit it, so it decreases the equity of the business, and I'm crediting my debit control, which is my asset account, decreased in value to go for credit of 19,200. My total debit figure will therefore be 21,200. Well, good job. I've done some explanations around the income statement, and I've highlighted a few adjustments for you. But, don't go away. Because when we come back, we'll be looking at the examination of the question, 
and tell us the thing some statement to them. Get them to you guys. Just be done with them. Just do with us. See you in the Welcome back to the world. Yes, remember, you are the one stop. You are the Sahara. You are the other society. Yes, you are great. Yes, yes. Now we have to work. But before we do, I want to comment on the actual question on the green topic. That's right. So where do we start? We start off by reading the information and seeing exactly what is expected of us to do. Now, then, in a country, you are also provided with an answer book. So your answer book gives you an indication of what is required. So keep that in mind, because remember, many times, subjective is what we call the modus operandi. Subjective of operation. If you can sort that out, I promise you, A and A is definitely something a symbol that's going to be on this road. And that's what you're working for, aren't you? So, in order to do that, let's try to do the question. Let's see how we go. We are told that it's the financial statements question. It's simply a limited. You are provided with the key adjusting chart balance, right? I need to tell you that the company buys or sells green forms important to the buyers and selling of them. And it also repairs green forms for their customers. Okay, now how is this done? Any information that is given to you is given to you for a purpose. So please, guys, make notes as you went along. As you see, the way I'm working, do it all to highlight it in the action. Make notes to you exactly the pertinent information is being provided to you. These things are plenty of great in some of them in the general version. So important. It's easy. It's not. But what do I have in my information? In my information, I have my pre adjusting chart balance. I'm given a balance sheet section. Right? And I'm given a nominal account section. Okay, guys. Remember, this is the figure from your child balance. Your job and finance figure. You have to see it. Right? What's my figure? My figure is 2,750,000. And you need to know what I'm going to do. It's identical to 2 million. 2 million 720,000. Alongside my sales. So you can clearly see what am I doing. I'm taking information from my child balance and I'm updating my answer book because in my answer book I need those figures. Right, then, next one. Take my cost of sales, 1,310,000. Take my cost of sales figure, here goes 1,310,000. And see, Cost of sales one million three hundred and fifty thousand. You can clearly see I show you how we use the brackets that we are using when we are working with them in some cases. Okay, so already I've indicated two figures taken from my from my pre adjusting child balance. I've taken those figures and I've been putting them into my answer. I haven't done a single adjustment to them. But you can clearly see from the exactly what I was talking about earlier on. Okay, now, when it comes to tax allowances, watch I'm going systematically through my normal account section. Here goes. Here's my tax allowances 6,200. Now, get to it. No question here. Nobody is going to tell you to take. Or, or, or there's going to be an adjustment that's going to appear. Immediately, the moment you find debt allowances on your pre adjusting child balance, immediately, guys, immediately, take it. And what do you do with it? Debt allowances. The transport to sales is paid for subtracting from your sales here. Minus, let's get the figure again. 
what Peter eats. So, understand what I'm doing. I'm telling you how to go about answering a question. But, starting with salaries and wages, take your salaries and wages, the amount of rent is 60,000, immediately go to your expenses now. I have to find my salaries and wages here. And uh, salaries and wages, open my bracket. And the amount is 162,000. So here, 162,000. So you can clearly see that I'm taking information from my clients. This is my driver which is sitting in front of me. And I'm taking the information and I'm putting it, I'm placing it into my answer book. Without even getting any questions as yet. Only one that has actually adjusted that gives the people an answer. So, no that one. Okay, next, let's pick up the next item here. The next item that I have here is my discount allowance. 905. Okay, into my answer book. Discount allowed. Open my bracket. 905. Next one. Income. Income. My amount for my income is 104750. 104750. And here, open my bracket. 104750. Okay, so you can see the difference. You can see the amount from my side balance. Immediately inserting that figure onto my answer book. What you see in front of me is your answer book. Okay, let's carry on. So that one's been dealt with. Rent income, 66,000. Take my rent income, go to my answer book, rent income, open my bracket, 66,000. Yeah. Okay, next one. Insurance, 11,000 rand. So, therefore, insurance, 11,000 rand. Insurance, open my bracket. Guys, I hope you understand what I'm doing. Notice, I haven't started with my adjustments as yet. All that I'm doing, I'm taking information from my trial balance, which I put into my Income statement, and then you will see when you start with adjustments. Let's get into that. Some of the expenses 39,250. That one there. And then you go along. Fix the item so you know you've dealt with it. That way you won't forget it. Some of the expenses 39,250. Some of the expenses open my bracket. One. Direct fees, 390,000. Direct fees, 390,000. Okay, next one. Remember, I dealt with my direct fees, so I took it off. All the fees, the amount is 53,705. That one there, 24,000. So if you put it into my, if you find my consumable stores here, there's my consumable stores. Open my bracket. So the amount once again, consumable stores, 24,000. So therefore, 
activities for thousands. Okay, so again, you will note as I'm going along, all that I'm doing is taking summation and basically putting it into my answer because I'm going to be useful. Let's take it back. Almost there. Interest income. What's my interest income? 2,500. There's a 2,500. Watch out. Like we said earlier on, you will be poor. You will not show your interest income under your other income. Notice it doesn't appear there. Interest income appears at the bottom. Interest income. The amount was. Let's get the amount. 2,500. Therefore, interest income. 2,500. Okay. I think there's one more that you have there. It's not the interest income. Now, one that definitely needs your attention. Watch that. This one here. Marked up clearly on your trial balance. To communicate to you that yes, it's appearing in the nominal account section. There's the nominal account section. Absolutely right. Yes, all your issues evidence is an expense to the company. But it is at one expense it does not, I repeat, does not appear in your income statement. So the moment you see it here as an expense under the nominal account section, indicate that I'm silent. Have you seen and read things in some ways? So you know that when you come to the balance sheet and when you are doing it, you know, for you income, then definitely you will not forget to put your order and shift of energy in. Kai, please, the appearance in my normal account section, no doubt about it, yes, it is an expense, but it does not appear on your income statement. What else? Okay. Let's move on. We start with our adjustments. You are provided with a pre adjustment trial balance. We dealt with it as we then said we have spoken about it. Right? We can't, we've read all of this already. Now we come to our adjustments. It says this Predicate expenses in respect of funding expenses of the A3200 have not been factored into your account. I want to take you back here. Speak to this one here. And I want to show you something here. When you look at your balance sheet account section, remember these are your balances. These are your balances. And that's beginning of your foundation here. Or as they have been amended. But now, Watch it up here. You will find that in this year there is information regarding all your assets and all liabilities. Right? Okay. Now, if you take into consideration the adjustment that has been given to you, what they tell us? They tell us that you may expenses in respect of funding expenses at the end of the year, 3,200 have not been taken into account. Okay. Before we go there, before we go there, I want to take you back to this one here. Whenever you are doing questions on financial statements, you will look in your balance sheet account section and see if you can identify any of the big five. What am I referring to? Am I talking about the lighter and the elephant? Certainly not. I'm talking about a fixed income, income received in advance, also known as detailed income, accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, and considerable share of capital. If any of those five items, please listen carefully, if any of those five items here is my trial balance here, it means that the rehearsal has not been done. You must be able to do the reverse. So clearly, 
is not the case in this question. So we are just trying to read a very much here. Okay. So, this one here, we pay expenses in respect to funding expenses at the end of the year, 3,200 has not been taken into account. Immediately, that's what I do, guys. I go into my answer book and I say, fuck. Notice here that I have an expense for funky expenses. There's 39,250. This one here. There's 3,200 which we have not been paid off. What must we now do? We must make an adjustment in respect of this. Double entry, double equal expenses. Why? It's a temporary asset count, debit equal expenses, credit some key expenses. That's right. Go to your company expenses now, and you say, because it's an expense. Right? Let's just get the amount once again. 3,200, because it's an expense, and the expense is actually decreasing. So, into your company expenses, and you say, minus 3,200. What? Pick up the calculator. 39,250. Minus your 3,000 is equal to 36,250. There's your answer. 36,250. You can clearly see your done and adjusted. Adjusted your funding expenses based on the information that is given to you. Okay, next adjustment. On 30th of September 2009, 500 was received from a office whose account had previously been written off as irrecoverable. The amount was entered in the census control column in the cash journal. There's your adjustment. Watch. There's your adjustment. In other words, what has happened? You have received money from who? From a office. Who's me? Who was somebody that owed you money? Whose debt was written off as irrecoverable and now pays you? Correct. That's taken place. What did we do? We have entered the amount. What's here? This amount was entered in the census control column in your tax receipt journal. In other words, you have made an error. You have kept it back. Correct. No problem. But you have credited your census control. Your credit was supposed to have gone to an account called bad debts recovery. Okay, so obviously, how would you correct this? You will debit your debt control and credit that debt recovery. Let's go right into it. Under my debt debt recovery, what? Open it up. Now, obviously, there is nothing in the file balance, that's why you have no figure there. The figure there that we had here was an amount of 580 rand. There is the amount of 580 so therefore, the debt is recovered. Five hundred and eighty dollars. Leave it for now. We won't finalize it until we're done with all our work adjustments. Remember that, guys. We will not finalize any of the amounts. Those that are discreet and we can't finalize, we'll do that. Let's just hope on to finalize this one. Let's go to the next adjustment. The provision for bad debt must be adjusted to 1830. This one here. The provision for bad debt must be adjusted to 1830. Watch this here. I want you to watch this carefully. Now it's not going to count. Provision for bad debts. I'm going to go into my question and find my provision. And what was my provision figure? It should be on my previous page. So go to it. Watch. Provision for bad debts. My amount is 1,440. What type of account is provision for bad debts? Provision for bad debts 
be a negative person. Yes, right? A negative person. And what is a negative person? A negative person is a person that reduces the value of your asset. You have a balance of 1,400 points. What? Negative asset, credit balance, 1,400 points. Okay. Now, back to my question. It said that, that it could never be adjusted to 1830. I want to try to be easy to be Okay, guys, now look at this here. And please, if you understand this, you will understand the need for the CFO. It's meant to be to make you understand what you are doing. Ask yourself the question What do you want to do to your business? You're standing on an amount of 1,440. So obviously, you want to increase it. You can see that. From, what, from 1440 to 1850. So, you take your 1850 minus 1440, and your answer is 390. Okay, so clearly you can see that in order to do this, you need to fill it account with 390. And if you are closing this account, then definitely. You can get it to your decision for the past six. And that's the account with the money. Okay, guys, remember, these are calculations. In your calculations, you can abbreviate. I always do that. It's a calculation. At the moment, you are working. Finish with some statement. Watch here. Notice, no abbreviation. Right? When you're working in a statement formation, letter as well as in a given word, it's not a good A calculation by all means is good. Right. What the figure? 390 is never to serve you correct. Let's check it out. Get the leads. You need to make an adjustment. Open my bracket. 390. And obviously, it would be the final amount so we can fix it. Right. So this is here. My provision for bad is increased. Therefore, my adjustment becomes less than six. Got it. Great. That's what you have you would be directed at the start of your function period. Direct the speed that you paid for the first half of your function period on the first of April. Right? Secondly, you have to get food. You can go back to your page up to the point. A third director was appointed. All three directors earn the same monthly fee. And why would you send to those three directors? Okay, so this is what we need to do. Let's come to the question. And you will notice here, we have already inserted the figure. Let's try this. Where's our balance? It is, it is 390,000. And that 390,000, you guys know, was for what? Let's look at the question. The two directors at the start of the question. There were two directors. The directors who were paid for the first half of the function period. The first thing that you do is you ask yourself at the time, if they were paid 390,000, they were paid for the first half, you would deduct that by six. And that would give you an amount of 65, uh, 65 is that going to be the same thing for this? 390,000. That's that. Divided by six. My answer is 65,000. Then you send them. 65,000 per month. Okay? That's why you divide it by 6. But obviously, it is for two directors, so you divide it by 2 to each of the numbers. 32,500. Now, you are only three on, on the 1st of April, something happened. Let's see what happened on the 1st of April. On the 1st of April, a third director was appointed. Okay? So April, May, June, July, August, September, and all three directors earn the same monthly fee. Now remember this. You have to cater for three people now. You first have to cater for the old directors. 
people did for six months, right? And you have to fix it with a new guy that's there for six months, all the time. Clear. But to my, that's to my calculation. If I look at my calculation, I'm saying, fine. We said 309,000, and we take that to two directions, and two for two, 195,000 each. Multiply this by three. So why is that? Why am I doing that? Because I now own three directions for six months. So into my answer, Obviously, because I'm owing them, my like two accounts involved are, what are my two accounts involved? They are direct fees and fees of state. I debit to direct fees plus the state account plus 585,000. Okay? Turn it to my accrued expenses, my notice. I'm not keeping record of my balance sheet items. Why? Because in this question, my balance sheet is not required. Clear, guys? Hope you understand it. But if you look at this income statement and you notice how we are adjusting to this as we are going along. Okay. Let's go to the next adjustment. Been received for 14 months. It's simple. It's a straightforward one. I'm not the one that I did in the previous, in our previous book of the whole show. And to recall that one, this one is pretty straightforward. Why? Because your rent has remained constant for 14 months. Therefore, what do I do? I go into my. Remember, I moved the algebra. I put my rent in the figure of 56,000 rent. So, what do I do? I take my 56,000, right? Divide by 14, is equal to 4,000 rand per month. Okay, notice, I'm dividing by 14. I'm dividing the earth by 14. Why? Because I'm showing I received two for 14 months. Okay, that's my calculator. So, take the rent figure, divide by 14, will be an amount of 4,000 rand. Now, ask yourself the question. Financial year, 12 months, so two months, then I will be received in advance. Identify your two accounts involved. The two accounts involved are rent income and default income, also known as income received in advance. Currently, debit my rent income. Why? I need to decrease it. Credit income received in advance, credit default income. One day, it's default income, not in it, it's income received in advance. Same account, temporary liability. So, currently, once again, debit my rent income, credit income received in advance, 4,000 times two months is 8,000 rand. Watch that. Minimize that. Go to my rent income. There's my rent income, 56,000. Understand. Credit. If you are debiting, what are you doing? In accounting terms, you are subtracting minus 8,000 rand from fifty-six thousand minus your eight thousand is equal to forty-eight thousand. There goes your rent income. You can finalize an amount. The amount will be. Okay, the cloud is clearly see how we are going about answering a question with this way of adjusting the way of income statement. Let's move on. Next adjustment. The following credit note was left out of my profit allowance in January to September in error. The market on good sold was 50%. I like certain information. Right? When we leave out, the debit allowance is just. Okay, let's look at what we have here. 
and the income saving for surplus is here. If you want to be able to actually grow that person, to pick up our pain. Remember, you remember our calculations? Let's pick them up from the bottom here. It was 479,000. You can clearly see that we have 479,000. Right? Instead of 6,000 plus the 6,400 that we can and you compare what? The 490,000. The 490,000. That one there, so therefore, you can get it to account. You have 490,000 here. Remember, you can see your 490,000 here. It says here to you that this is your fatality, is your death. So this is a figure of 4,600. So in other words, you have a trading stock surplus of 4,600. Most important, do your adjustments in trading stock first, and then compare it with your final figure and for your principal interest rate. Okay, let's go back to our question to our next adjustment. The loan statements from same day reflected the following. There are your balances. Now, this is critical. The cloud very, very important. Note what I do. What how I go about doing this particular question. What? I'm going to go into my answer. I want to show you the calculation. So this is what I want. I'm going to open up my account. And the account that I'm going to open is my loan account. Let me start with my introduction. What do I know? My balance at the beginning of the year was 150,000. Right? So, opening balance, 150,000. Just to remind my handwriting, please, you make sure that you write me to it. Okay, next one. Repayments during the year amount to be. 78,000. What will I do? The payments amount to 78,000. So in my loan account, 78,000 equals my power entry. So repayments would be a debit to loan and a credit to bank. So anything that you've made, any repayments that you've made must be reflected in your loan account. Power entry once again, debit to loan, credit to bank. Okay, next one. Interest rate capitalized, then you can see a figure. And when you see a question mark, you start typing. No, don't see it. Let's have to see here. Because I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Balance at the end of the year amounts to 90,000. There you go. 90,000 is my closing balance. Watch it, guys. 90,000 is my closing balance. And there it works to value brought down is also a balance capital. Okay, now look at the loan account because it's going to give you important information. Watch. Let's clear that. What information do we have? We know that we have 78,000 plus 90,000. So therefore, 78,000 on the debit side plus my 90,000 on the debit side is equal to that. 168,000 minus the 150,000 on the credit side. You are left with a figure of 18,000 red. Okay, now what is this 18,000 red? What is this missing figure here of 18,000 red? This 18,000 red here is your interest exchange. Watch what I did. I reconstructed my loan account, as you can see. I started in my opening balance. 
taken over by a of the direct. Let's do that as a starting point. Okay. This is my explanation. The other thing is that this movement of people saying, yes, it's sorry, guys, it's the equipment. It's not the equipment that you can see the computer. Right? So maybe I would have to be remember to do the computer. So it's the equipment that I'm just talking about. The first part of this equipment was easy to culture. Okay. Now, you know, look at this here. My question has asked me to calculate the profit of this and the disposal of the computer. So this, this what I'm going to do is going to impact on my income statement. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the information. I start off by doing the following. I say depreciation, cost price, assume you make a depreciation, then you have you, selling price, profit, or loss. Right? And then you are facing a question with any containing a question that has asset disposal in it. Draw this picture. I promise you it will make your task much, much easier. Depreciation. Work out your depreciation for your current debt. Now, here's the question. I am selling this asset, namely equipment, in June. Right? So it's happening in June, so year, year ago. I need to do a calculation to calculate my depreciation of this equipment, namely the computer. I know that it's a 10 percent of cost, so once again, once again, I'm going to use my R, my amount, my rate, and my time. The amount is 22,000 because it's on cost. My rate is 10 over 100. My time, what? It's going to be 12 over 12. In this particular instance, let's check. When do you sell the equipment? The equipment is sold on the 30th of June. Here you can see it. 30th of June. So, in other words, June has used this equipment from starting October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Like my mind. Okay. From nothing over 12. Let's have a calculation. 22,000 times 30 percent. Okay. Use the two, 2,200 divided by 12 times 9. My answer, 1,650. 1,650. That is my depreciation for the current year for the period under review. What I do? Then what would I do now? I say fine. Into my income statement, depreciation, the time, plus 1,650. That was my depreciation for the current year of the equipment that I sell. Okay. Now, what would I do now? I say that was the 1650. Put it in my table. 1650. What was my cost price? I admit it was 22,000. Then, what is my accumulation depreciation? Let's find it out. Let's check the information that we have. My accumulated depreciation on this bit of equipment at the point of the beginning of the financial year was 5,500. So, therefore, you have a set of depreciation 5,500. And I immediately put a fixed size here. Why? Because for this year, for this period under review, I need this equipment. For another nine months. And there's my calculation. That was the amount of depreciation that has been worked out for the nine months. So 1650, and that was equal to, again, we've got the 1650 there, 
to see 5,500 is equal to 7,150. Two thousand minus seven one five zero equal to fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifty. Okay, yes, that is fourteen thousand fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifty. Let me just check the idea of what I said right. Fourteen eight five zero. Okay, perfect. Now, what is the fourteen eight five zero? The fourteen eight five zero is your final value, the point of sale. Now you ask yourself the question, for how much do I sell this particular equipment? Back into my question, it was sold for 8,000 in cash, into your table, what's here? You've got your selling price of 800 in, what's 850 or 800? 800 it was, it's my selling price, of 800. Now you ask yourself the question, did you sell for more than the carrying value, or less than the carrying value, or equal to carrying value? Please you can see, look at your, look at your, look at your own calculations here. Yes, your 4850 was the carrying value. Your selling price was 800. So you have sold it for less than your carrying value. What? 4850. Minus your 800, then your 4050. Yeah, because we sold for less than the carrying value, it's made for less, or and the amount is 14050. 14050. We lost and saved us. What's the price? To my income statement, under my loss on asset, fourteen gigawatts, fourteen oh five zero. Then goes fourteen oh five zero. Right. What are we left with? We now have to calculate depreciation on my own unsold vehicles. What would we do? Right, back into the question. If we get the information that we have here, this is my equipment, the cost was 190000 so it's 190000 119,000. Remember, I sold equipment with a cost price of 22,000, so minus 22,000, right? So that's zero. 191,000 minus 22,000 will give me 116,000. That's 116,000 that I left here. This is the equipment that has got the new stuff, 116,000. Times my rate would be, if it's 10 to 10, 10 over 100, times 12 over 12, because that's what I've used for the whole year. If you can calculate this, it will give you a figure of 16,800. Okay, now, 16,800, let's get to our depreciation. And we can stop in our 16,000 plus 16,000. Okay, now it's your turn. Obviously, obviously, we do not have the time now to go in and finalize each of these amounts. What are you now going to do? You can find the ground work in your income statement. Just one example. Let's take a 
what I'm going to do. We're going to take that stage to what? Paul? Uh, what was it? 2 million 720,000, I think it was. 2 million 720,000. With those 2 million 720,000, we subtracted minus, what did we subtract? 6,200. Minus, we subtracted another from there, 9,600. To two million seven hundred four thousand two hundred two million two million two million seven hundred four thousand so to the right two hundred. Do you see what I'm doing? In the same way, you're going to take and finalize each amount. Is from the information from the brackets, you get to finalize the amount in your final sheet. And in this way, you get to complete your interview statements. The 12th, we have worked in the interview with any one thing. What you have to do now is to take questions from past statements, work through them, and date your past statements. Please, guys, do not read through your question paper. All the things you have that may improve is your vocabulary, and that's not what you want in accounting. You want to put pen to paper and work through the questions. And in this way, I promise you guys that definitely that any accounting is a real possibility. For me, as Dr. Chow, like I always say, aim for the moon because you don't get there. Definitely. You will be a shiny star. And that's how it is. Until the next time, keep your feet on the ground. Be good. Bye bye.